there it is. So we have a face off today. We have two sister cars that have both improved significantly since they were first released. We have the Kia Niro EV and we have the Hyundai Kona Electric. We do indeed. I like this tone of voice we're using. Yeah. Um, they're basically two pretty decent cars that are both going to compete for your cash, which means it's going to be a tough decision. So we've come up with an idea. Let us do the hard work, trust us, and we'll make the decision for you. I don't want to do any hard work. And would they trust me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel before anything else happens, please. Thank you very much. And look, if you've got anything to say, pop it in the comments section below and check out the website. Done. Done. Well done. done. Let's get cracking. These two have been electrifying faves. We do really love them. We like to think um, of Hyundai and Kia as two non-identical twins because they are part of the same big family. They might look different on the outside, but underneath they're kind of the same. However, there are quite a few differences which we will be going into. I mean, the Kia changed its name. They did, yeah. It used to be the Kia e Nero, and that's when it used to look quite froggish. Frog frog-like it was frogified frogified <laughs> yeah probably the best way to say it but now it's the kia nero ev it's got more of a sort of chiseled look more handsome more i wonder handsome. why they changed the name Do but anyway that's yeah. another story yeah well whereas the hyundai kona hasn't changed its name although we are saying hyundai instead of hyundai which gets, hyundai hyundai <laughs> hyundai we'll get that one day oh get that um, now, the Kona uh, hasn't changed its name, but it does look quite different to how it did five years ago. And the Nero over here, well, actually, it had a refresh about three months ago, so it is bang up to date. So which do you prefer is the question, because I've already found something that's annoyed me on the Kona. Can uh oh I, can watch I out. Watch out. Can I point it out to you? Go for it. This! So you're covering it up. <laughs> this! That's off-centre, which, which symmetrically... Is that a word? I don't know. Symmetrically bugs me. Whereas on the Nero, that is nice and central and looks much neater. That's the first thing that bugs me about this car. I actually couldn't agree with you more. It is very annoying. I do like the asymmetrical, asymmetricality. That's a new word. Aesthetically pleasing is um, that's what we like. Yeah, it, it, no, being asymmetrical is not aesthetically pleasing. Symmetrical is the way we want it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, agreed. Yeah. So next on the list, let's talk about the noses and how they differ. This, um, well, it's a bit more chiseled. It's a bit more defined. Some might call it a little kink. Nothing wrong with a kink in your nose, <laughs> uh, which I think I prefer compared to your rounded. Yeah. Um, um, that looks much nicer than this. And I don't think the purple color of this car is doing this any favors because I'm going to throw this out there and say, I think the nose of the Kona looks like a cartoon hippo. <laughs> Like, like You're not a kid's far cartoon, wrong. right? And it's a hippo called Charlie or something. And he's got like a big round purple nose and likes to play with his friends in the forest. I think now that I've seen it as a hippo, I can't unsee that. Although at least <laughs> yours has function. I do like the light bar across the front. That's I feel like true. that's a missed opportunity here. Why would we not have a lovely little light bar? That would be nice. Can I give you another point where I think the Kona wins? Yes. Wheel arches. These are full body coloured wheel arches whereas on the Nero you've got bumper coloured ones that I just uh, I'm not really a fan of. You're kind of drawing attention to something that isn't particularly nice so I don't know why you would do that. Yeah. I agree. Stick with the same colour. Don't go for the black. I am going to say I think the side profile of that car of the Nero looks a bit nicer whereas Hyundai when it comes to a design of a car go Lines on a car? I'll give you lines on a car. Let's do lines, lines and more lines. Mm. So when you look at it down the side, it's just, it's got lines for absolutely no reason. Whereas down the side of the Nero, you have a little random hole for extra aerodynamicness. Shall we go to the rear of the car? Oh, the because, bum? Because, yeah, right. I, oh, we're going to call it the bum then. Because yours is a bit more glitzy. You've got a slightly more glamorous bum than Thank I do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mine is a little bland. Um, it's a bit average. I would say it's a bit 2.4 children-esque. If you're stuck in traffic, I think you would rather be stuck behind the Kona bum rather than the what Kia you're going to say behind your bum? Behind my bum. <laughs> because... It's just a nicer, more stylish design. The light bar looks really nice. It's got a nice bit of curvature to, to the rear end. I think it's a lovely looking thing. Whereas 
when you're stuck behind the Nero, it's just a bit boring. It's just a bit of a boring bum, that. You're not going to notice it. It's not going to turn heads. One final point up for discussion, and I'd love to hear your comments on this one. What does that say? Kia. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Well, that's what it's supposed to say, of course. But uh, lots of people think it says KN. Uh, does it? Does it not? I can see two sides to the argument. I mean, to me, yeah, I do read Kia, but that's because I think we know the brand and we know the logo and we're around it quite a lot. Whereas my mum definitely sees that as KN. I can, well, I can see it because it looks like a K and then a backwards N. Yeah. So maybe if they put a little, little dot there, then they've sold the problem, really. Then it they? would definitely say Kia. Agreed. Yeah, but you can't add more because aerodynamics. That's the logo. Aerodynamics. That's not true. <laughs> Should we look inside? Oh, well, it's getting a bit chilly. Go yeah. on, then. Let's do Kia first. So because these two are based on the same platform, it's no surprise that they've had some similar improvements. Both are slightly longer and have had some space added to the passenger compartment. So they're both more roomy than they were before. And well, here's a little fun fact for you. They both have much slimmer front seats to eke out the most of that rear space. So guess what? Both are more practical. So. Both of them are five seats and both of them have this dual screen setup. I'm going to throw this out there to begin with. I think the Nero is a bit boring. Oh, I mean, it's a little harsh. There are some nice features to it. Um, I also like the sustainability elements to it. Can I just talk you through my pseudo leather that is made from recycled eucalyptus tree waste? It doesn't unfortunately smell of eucalyptus, that would be an added bonus. And up here we have some recycled wallpaper. Oh. <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah. I that... wonder where it came from. <laughs> Storage isn't the best in here. Let's so you've look. got, that's not very deep in there. Oh, does that come out though? The I think is it no. does. A couple of cup out. holders. <laughs> the this is tiny and the door bins are significantly slim. I do like I need to get though, some snacks in how there. you can option the cup holders with without. Yeah. So there you go. I've just increased your door bin size. Did you just say increased? Increased. <laughs> Uh, what else do we like? Well, I'm also going to talk about how we do like a physical button. Mm -hmm. Particularly, we've got physical buttons for heated seats and heated steering wheel, oh. which I just enjoyed for this, this morning for the very first time this year. Oh. Put my heated steering wheel on and was just happy. Living very the dream. Happy. So yeah, we've got some physical buttons down here and then this sort of control bar across the middle. It looks like it should be haptic. It's not, but it looks nice. I think it has a nice sort of modern finish to it and it's relatively straightforward to use. Yeah, okay, I'd agree with you on that. Uh, Carl's turned itself off. Do you want to press the button again? Because I want to talk to you about the screens actually. So Tell press me. The button. But I did like the music. Yeah. Maybe not every time you get in and out of the car. So has it not annoyed you yet? The fact that the screens are at different heights? It has not. And I will tell you why. Because the screen here is perfectly positioned for my eye line. Mm. It's not in the way of the steering wheel. Of course. Which is brilliant. And then across here, okay, you have to take a little dip down with your eye line. However, it is then not again up here in my eye line when I actually want to see the road. Because sometimes they're just a little too high. Now, I, I find that annoying. I get that. And I, I, under I understand where I you're coming what you're from. Say. Yeah. But they've connected them. <laughs> It's a connected swoopy process. So if you're going for a full connected experience, like say in the in the Kia EV6, for example, yeah. there are two screens connected and they're at the same height on a nice curvy connected glass panel. But why have them at different that's bugged me. Yeah, I I I'm just gonna go with I also like it because <laughs> you've got the swoop, which gives feeling of space over here whereas okay. if it was no swoop it would have to be higher and then it would just be a bit more dominating a bit more in your face okay. whereas I quite like the feeling of space okay. over there that's fine so there you go I've got one more thing I want to moan about <laughs> okay can I, I guess, guess what it is <laughs> oh I've already seen it yeah sticky fingerprints everywhere everywhere fingerprints everywhere. and dust on gloss black and it's as much as sometimes when it is clean it looks lovely 
All when it takes. When will it ever be clean? That's the thing. When you literally drive out of the showroom. Yeah. I mean, look, we tried, tried to clean it and it still looks grubby. Agreed. But you know what, while we're here, yeah. you know you said you didn't want to do any hard work today. Yeah. Well, we're doing a bit of work, but I feel like it's time to try the seats because they apparently fully recline. So if you want to take a break, hold on a minute. Out, this is your moment, Nicola. Keep going. This is gripping television, you, this, you, isn't you've it? You've got um, about 30 seconds of, <laughs> of relaxation time. Stop it. Close those eyes. That's lovely, that's I'll wake you in a minute. Especially with the little sunroof going on. We'll do some star watching. Yeah, that's the point though, it is little. It is sunroof. little, yeah. It'd be nice if it was a bit bigger. Yeah. So looking at the rear seats, great for two. Middle seat is a bit narrow, but there is a lovely square 475 litre boot or 1,392 litres with the seats down and a lovely little 20 litre frunk. Didn't have that one before. And it's just about big enough to deal with a cable if you properly wind it up, which, uh, well, I don't, do you? Right, so in here, I'm gonna throw this out there and say this looks cleverer. Oh. <laughs> moderner. Yes. More futuristic-ish. Uh, <laughs> futuristic-ish, I think that's pushing it. But it is, it's fresh, it's clean. Mm. I like it. Yes. Yeah, it, it does, it suddenly, when you get in here, it makes the Nero feel a bit dated. Yes. This so, has a very nice feel to it. First things first, the screens. They, they are, are level. They are <laughs> level, they are bigger, they are both the same size, actually. Nicer to look at, and it's got a nicer layout going on inside. Yeah, I, I have to say, okay, that is fair enough, and actually, it's still quite clean over here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so maybe we don't need to have them at different heights. Yeah. Um, the thing I am particularly excited about, well, A, obviously we've got physical buttons, which is always a plus. Mm -hmm. I am looking down here and there is no gear selector. It just says drive mode, which means- It's here. There, oh, there it I is. I absolutely love having the gear selector by the steering wheel. Yeah. It just makes so much more sense. Yeah. Uh, so that is a big bonus. It's also very satisfying to hold, like it just feels nice. Oh, good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, while you're holding that gear selector, I'm going to go look at the storage. Ta da! It's got more storage, technically. Technically, it does. However, I don't like open storage. Personally, I'm maybe a messy person that likes to hide all my stuff. So I prefer hidden storage, more like a bin here. Uh, so yeah, I suppose it's bigger. It's also got an extra shelf here. Open tray, right. an open tray. Not such clean, not such a fan of that. Uh, that's quite a good storage size. And the door bins are bigger. They're yes. definitely bigger. So that's a plus. Oh, and another plus, mm -hmm. no gloss black. That is a, a win. Yeah, so no, down, no fingerprint dramas. I think it's the gloss black that makes it feel a bit dated in the Nero. Yes. Yeah. No gloss black is a, is a definite good thing. Yeah, so this is this is all very nice and, and positive and fresh. lovely. Yeah. So fresh and so clean. Yeah, exactly that. Now, one thing you might have noticed, mm -hmm. how is your back feeling? Are you as comfortable here in the Kona as you were in the Nero? Yeah, you're right. They're just a little bit narrower, a bit tighter. Yes, down, they are. Down the back onto the bum. It's just a little bit of a squeeze. Yeah. Not Nero. uncomfortable, but the Nero wins on that. Nero has comfier seats. Okay, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. There are three things that are basically exactly the same in both cars, right? So both of them get Apple CarPlay and Android mm. Auto as standard. However, you also need to get yourself a cable because it's not wireless. It's very in either that. of them, it's not wireless. You have to plug your phone in, which is a bit of an annoyance. Mm -hmm. uh, they both have the cup holder party trick. You know, the one that you liked in I the did. Nero? Yes. This also can do the party trick. Shaboom. Uh, and they both have uh, vehicle to thing capability. So um, if you ever want to plug something in. Exactly. So yeah. this is obviously a bit of a selling point for electric cars when you can do plug into things. Yeah. When does anyone actually plug into things like <laughs> kettles and washing machines that we talk about? Why would anyone ever do that? Why do you need it? Like I've seen I've seen other Tell me in the comments below. I've seen other people's it? car videos where they've like plugged in a washing machine and things but like that. But that's you know for a video <laughs> to get views. Let's be honest. <laughs> What does one need it for? Because surely wherever you're driving, unless you are camping in your car, but a lot of the time you're probably camping in a camper van. 
Under, which you probably have a plug in. I have two two things, right? Number one, if you've ever been on a shoot with Ginny, she always has she always has her tongs with her. To this is true. Curl her hair. This is true. So maybe if you need to do your hair on the go, you can plug in your straighteners. I and like stuff that like idea. That and do your yeah. hair in the car. Or you could just buy straighteners that are rechargeable and don't need plugging in. You, yep, you could also do that. <laughs> also, you can charge each car from each car. So like say we're on a road trip or something and one car has a lot of charge and I'm running really low, you could save me. That actually makes sense. Lend me a bit of charge. But how long would it take to charge? Because that's gonna be a slow charge. Probably is the answer. Uh, one thing, final thing that we wanna talk about is the dash cam, which is actually pretty awesome. And uh, oh, Manos. He's on his phone. Now let's get back to work. Who's he texting? I bet he's texting Ginny saying we're not doing much. I bet that's exactly what he's doing. Yes, oh, he's he can nodding. hear us. I forget he can hear everything yeah. we say. Oh, the beauty of these things called headphones. Now I don't right. know. I don't know how far these seats go back. So shall we um, give it a little test run? Because we sure, do it in the other car. Absolutely. Yeah. The headrests are more comfortable in this. As well. I think they're faster. I feel like there's a bit more a... speed. Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like I was lower in the Nero. I think it's because your head fell into the gap. Is this slightly bigger? It's bigger. It's yes, bigger. There you are. See, this is the only time you'll actually notice the yeah. size of your the size roof. of your roof. <laughs> I prefer a panoramic one though. Everyone loves a panny roof. So yeah, seats are noticeably thinner, but perfectly comfortable, which frees up knee space for rear seat passengers. Though the view from the rear window isn't as nice as the Kia. So you may think that the Kona has less space, and it does, but not by much. There's a 466 litre boot, 1,300 litre seats down, and a slightly bigger than the Kia 27 litre frunk. Storage for the load cover is a very nice touch. So I have actually been driving the Nero for the last week or so, so it's quite handy that I'm driving this today, because I can make a proper comparison, you see. and. Already this is quieter, this is much quieter than the Nero. In the Nero you can really hear like the road noise, but this feels quieter. It also is slightly slower than the Nero. Stay with me. It's got a top speed of 107 mile an hour and it will do 0 to 62 in 8.8 .8 seconds, which might sound in EV terms disappointing, but actually it's not. In a car like this, it kind of needs to be slower. It needs to be more gentle. And that's what they've done. They've slowed it down. They've made it calmer. They've made it a more gentle driving experience. And actually, it suits the car pretty well, doesn't it? It does. We've got 215 horsepower. And the front wheel drive, I have to mention as well, right? In the original Kona, the old Kona, you could sort of feel sometimes the front wheels kind of scrambling a little bit. But this feels a bit more grown up, you know? Oh, we've got some beeps. I'll tell you what, it does beep a lot. Yes, listen to it beeping already. Yeah, beeps a lot. Can I turn those off? So I know like lane keep assist, I can just kind of shush. Lane keep assist, I can just kind of hold that down, right? That's gonna turn that off. No, I want it off, sorry, off, off. There we go. It's also watching my eyes to make sure that I'm watching the road, which I am, thank you. But it beeps, <laughs> it's like it beeps every time you look away from the road. <laughs> which obviously you're not supposed to look away from the road, but every now and again you do, don't you? You know, to check your turnings and things. And it does, it does beep a lot. So you've also got the eye pedal, so the regen braking, which myself and I know Ginny and I know Nikki are big fans of one pedal driving. If you're used to one pedal driving and you love it, yeah, I agree with you. It's blooming brilliant. So use the flappies to flap all the way to the left. Eye pedal is on max. So we now have full one pedal driving. Although I have noticed that when you are on full one pedal driving, it kind of takes away from the throttle response, just a little bit, just 
just a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. This is the longer range version, by the way, and it will go slightly further. I think like an extra 32 miles further than the Nero. This also comes with a heat pump as standard, so Nero doesn't, which means the Nero, in terms of range, struggles a little bit more when it comes to the winter months. What are you beeping for now? Why? Why? Is there a reason why? Well, see now, going around this roundabout, I can't lie, I thought the body was going to roll a little bit more there, but it didn't, did it? That was... It's not as body rolly as I thought it was going to be. It's beepier than I thought it was going to be, though. Right, I need to figure out how to turn this off. Where should we go? Home. Problem is, if I try and turn it off, it's going to tell me off for not looking at the road. So, I guess the way to do it is to figure out how to turn off all the beeps before you leave and then you don't have to do any button pressing or get told off for not looking at the road while you're driving. I don't even know what that was for. Oh, that was for a change in speed because we're now up to natural speed limit. So it's telling me, it's beeping for the change in speed. No idea. Steering has a bit more weight to it than the Nero does. The Nero is quite light in terms of the, the steering and I always prefer to have a little bit more feel to it so you feel like you're connected to the car a little bit more by putting a bit more effort into your steering. Don't get me wrong, it's not heavy steering, it's just slightly heavier than the Nero so you feel more in control of the car than what you do in there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's telling me off for not looking at the road more often but I want to also look at this screen to switch off the beeps because the beeps are annoying. But this is, this is like a little sensor thing here that's watching my eyes to make sure that my eyes are looking in the direction that we are traveling. Which is a good thing because it means that you're looking at the road. But it also means if you do look away for a second or if you drive like this, which sometimes I do on long journeys, that you're covering up the sensor and it's going to start beeping at you. Is it? There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so you can't cruise like a gangster, I'm afraid. So, as far as range and charging goes, you would think that these two would be identical, right? You are wrong. This long range Kona gets a 65.4 kilowatt hour usable battery, which is only ever so slightly bigger than the Nero at 64.8, but it offers a whopping 319 miles of potential range, which is 32 miles more than the Kia. That's not nothing. And although it offers more range, it will get from 10 to 80% charge in the same 41 minutes. Now, that is thanks to the 100 kilowatt DC charging versus the Nero's 80. And neither of which is particularly impressive, come to think of it. I mean, these days, we're looking for under 30 minutes from 10 to 80% on a big enough charger. Oh, and the Kona has an 11 kilowatt charger on board, so it can make the most of a bigger AC charger if you have one at home. But if you stick it on a standard home wall box, you're looking at around 10 and a half hours. Now, peak charging rates, they're a bit like headlines. They're not the whole story. And while the Kona might have a faster peak charging rate, the average charge rate is exactly the same as the Nero EV at about 70 kilowatts. And that's what both cars have really looked at. They've actually got lower peak charging rates than they had before, but better average charging rates, which basically means they're going to charge more quickly for longer rather than peak hard and fast for a short time and then drop off. Right, so just like the Kona, this is the longer range Nero EV, which means over 200 brake horsepower. 201, to be precise. Um, that's actually less than the Kona by 15 brake horsepower though, so nothing to boast about, but it's quicker off the mark by about a second to this 0 to 62 miles per hour. Let's give it a go, because I think you can, um, you can definitely feel the difference there. Yeah, that's got a nice little punch to it. So that's great. 
but it's about the only thing that's more exciting than the Kona. Sorry, Nero. It's got the same architecture, but it's just not quite as well executed, I don't think. Immediately you notice that it doesn't ride quite as well. It's a bit more noisy. Um, like you can really feel the road underneath you and the Kona is particularly quiet. So um, overall steering's good, regen's good, but it's just not as good as the Hyundai. So you can probably see a bit of a trend forming here. Um, overall, I would say the Nero just feels a bit less special. Um, it's not taking anything away from it though. It's still a really solid performance. Yeah, there's not too much body roll, there's good vision. It's a really nice driving position. Um, so I think that would kind of suit everyone. Um, it's a really quite comfortable seat. So it's got a lot going for it. Just the Kona's better. Do you know what? I think it's just lacking a bit of spirit and enthusiasm. I'd like to see a bit more of that. You're not going to be disappointed with it, but you're not going to be nipping out just for the hell of it, I don't think. Overall, this definitely hits all the standards, but it's just not stand out. And because the Nero has a smaller battery, okay, so only by 0.6 of a kilowatt hour, it does have a smaller range of 287 miles which is more than the old e-Nero, but not up to the Kona standards of 319 miles. We found that both of these cars in their previous iterations have been pretty good at squeezing the maximum out of their batteries though. So real world range should actually be pretty good. And yes, the Nero gets 11 kilowatt AC charging and will charge to 100% in the same time as the Kona. So 10 and a half hours on a standard home wall box. No standard heat pump to help with the range in winter though, which is kind of annoying. So we're creeping closer to crunch time, but before we do, a couple of things to worth mentioning, the warranty. Kia have nailed this part of the market when it comes to warranty. Seven years, that is still phenomenal. Do you know, I thought the five years on the Kona was pretty good, but no, seven years is very good. I mean, it's good peace of mind, for the second hand situation, isn't it? Absolutely. It yeah. basically means that if you can keep your car for maybe five years, and then if you want to, you can sell it on still with a two year warranty. Oh, stunning. That's Absolutely good. Absolutely stunning. Mental maths there. Um, but it's time to talk numbers because the numbers always talk. Um, and actually, it's looking like the Kona comes out that little bit cheaper. And that's whether you buy it on a PCP deal or if you buy it outright. Outright, the long range is just under 35 grand and the PCP is just a bit cheaper, but that is of course at the time of filming. These deals are constantly changing, so worth checking. I don't even think it's, it's a little bit cheaper. It's quite a big difference, because even the long range of that is £37,295. So we're talking about a two grand difference yeah. here. Yeah, That's a I nice think holiday, I'm, which we yeah, might need. I think I know where this is going. Yes, we might have been hinting at this. <laughs> yes, we might have been hinting at this over the course of the whole video. But mm. the Kona, I think since it first came out in 2018, it's just got a bit bigger, a bit better. It looks a bit nicer. Yeah. It's quieter. It's, it's great. It's nicer to drive. Yeah. It is quieter. It tends to do everything with a dash more panache, doesn't it? I think it's a clear win for the Kona. Who doesn't do. like panache? <laughs> um, although I am going to just throw in a little curveball. Oh, go Just on to then. keep everyone on their toes. Okay. What about... The Volvo EX30. Ah, smaller. A little, ever so, ever so slightly smaller. Comparatively priced. Mm. Could be a, could be an option. We might have to put that <laughs> in our next face-off. So there we go. Watch this space. Sorry to confuse you further. <laughs> we thought we were helping. <laughs> we are. I hope so. Now, as ever, if you want to know anything at all about the world of electric cars, then please pop over and take a look at electrifying.com. And of course, we will be putting together the latest cars head to head. So if you want to see if that Volvo EX30 really can take on the mighty Kona, well, you better subscribe and find out what happens.